Hello YouTube or welcome on this fine day and today we are going to play Brewback Mill in Historic Brawl. The deck aims to win by using the abilities of petitioners or pers persistent petitioners um, together with Brewback the Grandiloquent who is also an advisor to mill out the opponent for 24 each time and two activations are 48 cards with, which is enough at, by that point in the game to win. Um, This is not... Well, while this deck's win condition is milling out the opponent, it's not really mill deck, it's more of a combo deck where you activate your combo twice and win. So that's how we play. Because you have to look at, uh, at it like this. We don't play any other mill cards like Teferi's Too Large and other cards, because those are effectively 100% useless in the deck. The sole reason for that is, if we activate Petitioners twice, we win. Okay, but if we mill the opponent for a bit with Tulash or um, like other mill spells, right? Um, and then activate Petitioners once, we don't mill enough to kill the opponent. So we need to Petitioners twice anyway, so there is no reason for us to play these other mill cards because they don't increase our clock, like they don't increase the amount of turns it takes to kill the opponent. This is why we've built the deck the way it is. Also, uh, this is probably the most budget-friendly historic brawl deck ever, kicking in at one, two mythics, and one, two wares, and that is it for the whole deck, pretty much. Um, other things to note. The right amount of petitioners. Uh, with 22 persistent petitioners, our chance of drawing... Um, uh, three petitioners, oh, and I'm counting Spark Double as a petitioner, and uh, we only need three because we have an advisor in our command zone. By turn four, our chance is 86% uh, of drawing three petitioners. But if we take a mulligan once, that chance um, shoots up to 96%, I believe. Or, yeah, 96% on the mulligan itself. And then 99% if we take him mulligan once and then have four more turns. So our chance to finding actually enough petitioners is really, really high. And I'm currently testing the Mox Amber, but it should be really nice in the deck because we have so much one mana protection that it allows us to play uh, our most aggressive line while having uh, more protection available to us. And that is the turn five... Yeah, the turn 5 win with turn 2 petitioners, turn 3 brewwick, turn 4 double petitioners, mill the opponent, untap, mill again, win. And spark double, while is it, it is more expensive than the petitioners, it allows us essentially the same line, but different, okay? So with spark double, the line of play is petitioners um, on 2, Petition on three, brew work on four, so we on turn three and four we have one mana up for protection. And turn fives play the spark double copying the brew work. So we mill the opponent one turn later, but we only need to activate once instead of twice because it uh, we used like we get twice twice, so that's milling for 48, and that's also game, right? As for the land base. I think um, using the uh, blue castle is, um, I don't know, I've never felt the need to activate it and it's just a tad more inconsistent and these two lands give us an edge over other lands because Zephyr and Void, we use colorless anyways with our petitioners, right? Uh, Scry is nice for the consistency and the emergence zone is nice in matchup where we need to play at instant speed. like and stepping in the brew work and then mill out the opponent and whatnot. As for the protection, uh, dive downs, essence flux is ex essentially hexproof on a creature, kinda, right? Because we can blink it and um, yeah, not to, using tails end because I don't really feel the need to prevent the opponent from what they're doing, I just want to prevent the opponent from interfering with us, so like disdainful stroke can hit board wipes. Lazata plating gives hexproof, negate, quench, all the kind of good stuff, right? Um, and really, one mana interaction is king here because with Mox Amber or Spark Double, we usually have one mana up 
uh, or only one mana up. Um, yeah. Anyways, I hope you will like the upcoming gameplay, and I will see you soon. We are ready to play against Chilane. And yeah, let's see. Against Chilane, I guess this is fine. Uh, because we go first and I, they usually play ram pieces on not a lot of interactions, so we can go for the aggressive start. Yeah, let's keep it nice and simple. Um, let's see if this works. Right? At this point we need to draw one more island or a mox. And wolves, go the goose, okay. Petitioners. At this point, the odds of drawing in mana source is the same as drawing a petitioner's right? Spectral Sailor, not at instant speed. <gasps> yep, Slaughter and Void. Oh, uh, sure, let's see what we have on top. Um, I guess, right? Doesn't matter too much if we go for the fast start. I guess if they play time wipe makes sense. Now let's pass the turn, no attacks. Because attacking them doesn't really do anything, really. So now we have to ask ourselves, do we Okay, they we chill in us? They don't have double white currently, but that could change very quickly. But I guess we go for the fast kill. Just make them have something. And we use the petitioners now to play around... Um, what's the name of the card? Palesend. So... This, and now they have to have an answer, or they die. Let's see. They bounce the brew back and the petitioner. Maybe that's enough to hold them, like hold everything off if they if I don't draw land. But I currently currently don't see them winning this. Tamio. Yep, and that is good game. Only Thopter. That would be cool. Right? <laughs> I guess they get back Ornithopter to play land from their hand and draw a card. Hmm. But yeah, I don't see them having a way out of this because the only thing that they could, like, get is maybe a... Well, if they have enough land, draw Tails and... Uh, Tails and is not in their graveyard, right? No, it's not. Nissa. Oh well, that means I win, right? Good game. And... Tab you. And this is game. GG. My god, we are playing against Shalai, Voice of Plenty. And oh boy. Let me tell you. I think I'm going to take... Well, I have two ways to counter Shalai, but I want maybe bounce... I mean... This has the answer to Shalai that we need, right? Oh well, let's keep it up. But the most optimal play against Shalai would be Unsummon. Because with Unsummon in their end step, I Unsummon Shalai, like, get out four advisors first, and then end step, Unsummon Shalai, mill them, my turn, untap, mill them again, win. So we, with, like, Unsummon, we can just, oh, okay, they really want, <laughs> they really want me. 
Yeah, with unsummoned we can mill them quite easily. Okay, at this point we want to draw a single land because that allows us to play. Um, okay, I can, I can see that happening. Angel, damn. Okay, and at this point we pass the turn because otherwise we lose. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, I think we I used the syncopate here. And then I move them for one, but it doesn't matter, really. Right? Yeah, it should not matter. Like, okay, you you pretty much never mill them with the petitioners because it doesn't matter at all. And it may give them additional cards in the graveyard that you don't want them to have, essentially. Um. Okay, I go with double petitioners here. Don't attack to play around seal away or something like that. And if I draw a land, I can call the Brewback and Quench. And anyways, you don't activate the petitioners usually, uh, because if you're playing against some instant speed interaction deck, like black has destroy effects and red can bolt your things, right? Okay. Okay. Prison Realm. That makes things a bit more annoying. I can agree on that, but... Yeah, maybe I sh I don't know if it was correct to hold some things here. Yeah, brew work and then just pass the turn. <clears throat> so, let's see. Do they try to sh uh, drop Shalai again? I would be completely fine with that. And then I... I lasered plating here instead of Essence Flux because that is a bit cheaper. Lazard of Plating. And now we Petitioner mill them. Hold up Quench. Yep. So now the really interesting part is no tax. And turn. the really interesting part is if they have Veil of Summer in the graveyard. Yeah, there it is. So that's good to know. Yep, we quench. And that is good game. GG. Nice. And they're dead. Nice. Good game. Kinnan, Wonder Prodigy. So we meet at last. That matchup, Miskar, seems kind of fine. We will probably draw one more land petitioners. Oh, uh, sure. Syncopate. Depends if they have a fast start or not. We will maybe not do anything on turn two. Oh, they go first, though. So we can't counter what they... We can't counter them anyways. Not really much I can do there. Oh, your opt is nice. And usually when you're in a situation like this where you want to draw lands and like spells, you usually don't opt because you want pretty much everything that's on top. But we need to use that now because otherwise I don't think we will able to use the mana later. But that we never need this anyways in the matchup, especially if we have dive down. Okay, so that was nice. Um, I don't think Syncopate does a whole lot here. Yeah, unfortunately it really doesn't do anything because they they have one excess mana, whatever. Okay, so it would have done something here. Yeah, it would have done something, but just in this specific case. 
Okay, um... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have the opening, we played the brew work, and then we top take a land next turn, but... They just activate Kinnon on turn 4, and... Let's see how it goes. Okay, that's that's a, that's a pretty good free card here. And all of these cards are essentially dead. Okay, Brewberg has returned to the hand. That is unfortunate. Okay. So if we had played the petitioners, yeah, we would have still had like a one turn slower kill. And now we play Rubik to keep up one mana stuff with the Hexproof. Yep, doesn't matter. Like at this point we just want don't want him to draw an end race or crater of or what not. Nezahold doesn't really mean anything here. Oh damn, they can activate twice. So they Yeah, we're dead next turn to some finisher really yeah okay land land nice sure petitioner petitioner and we use this now yeah like if they end race crater of something like that us we lose anyways and this yeah there is kogla perfect meteor goal well we didn't care about any of those and oh shit we're dead right because we weren't able to mill yeah we're dead they can 100 percent get a finisher here gg rip <laughs> because they've already put so much stuff on the bottom yep there it is and that is good game. GG. We are ready to go against Kinnon, Bondo Prodigy, and... Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. At this point, we just want to draw Petitioners. And, yeah. Let's see where we go from here. I mean, the chance is not that bad to draw them. Right? But I need to actively scry for petitioners. Miscast, I don't think they will cast and it's no sorcerer in turn one. Especially with that start, right? And if I don't have a petitioner, okay, I didn't draw a petitioner. I don't have a petitioner on top. So maybe I want to yeah, I want to be able to quench a mana dog here. They knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. We both knew it was coming. Okay. Um. So I think I will sneak in the brew wreck with the miscast. Yeah, it's the same amount of mana anyways because we have the box ever, but we can only activate it with brew workers on the field. So just use the mana now, really. Okay, Kitten, that's a great sign because they didn't drop a mana rock now. Yeah, perfect. Uh, sure, let's opt. Petitioner? No, that's not a petitioner as well. That's also not a petitioner, wow. Uh, use you and use you. Keep up the lands. Okay, I was ready to counter something here. No tax. And we will negate a Mox Amber if they try to play that. Uh, sure, we also negate an Arcane Signet if they try to play that here. And then if they counter that, that is also fine, I guess, because that it doesn't allow them to drop two Mana Dorks. That only allows them to drop one. Well, if they have... Um, don't have a ma one Mana Mana Dork, that is. But it's rough. It is rough. We only drew one Petitioner. So, oh my god. 
Okay, in this case, like, Emergent Stone is directly competing with, uh, 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 what's the name of the card? Cursal Ventress. So maybe you add a Ventress here, but, uh, it is something special right now. Yeah, Petitioner Mildew. Pass. Petitioner? Okay, there it, there it is. A Petitioner. It's a rare sight. <laughs> okay, um... Hmm. At this point, they will just activate Kin over and over, right? Sure. And if they get interactive pieces, I guess I'll... Oh yeah, perfect. Well, they can activate Kinnon twice now. Yeah, they can activate Kinnon twice now and then three times next turn if I... Okay. But so far, it's not too bad. Okay? If we top deck a Petitioner, we still have a decent chance at this game. Didn't drop a, a, a top deck a petitioner. We mill them for four. Yeah, that's not enough, so it doesn't increase the clock here. Oh, it's so rough. I mean, doesn't matter. We mill you. And sure. Fine with that, being balanced. We don't have anything to do with the mana anyways. Yeah, they t just attack with Nezol maybe? Oh, they don't attack with Nezol. And now they... Oh, okay, they a little bit of a misplay here. And they find Galta. Okay, we're pretty much dead. Uh, I guess we play the immersion. Yeah, let's do this now. D I don't see point of doing this, like not doing this really. Because it essentially saves us a mana for next turn. There is the petitioners, but... Okay, if we do this... They can't end raise us, right? No, 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 we need to block and then mill them. Oh, it's rough. We need to block and then mill them, otherwise we lose. Oh no! Oh, GG. Also, we didn't have any creature counters. GG. Ah, my next victim is going to be a Layla. Beautiful. Spell Pierce, Unsummons, Petitioners. Let's go. It yeah, should be fun. At this point, I just need to draw lands. If I was against green, this would be even better because I could unsummon their turn one land elves or turn two mana dork. In this case. Yes, land. Perfect. One more land and we're ready to go. Or maybe a Mox Amber would be even better, right? But that's just me being silly. Okay. Uh, I don't think I care about that. Because that just wants to kill me, but very, very menacingly, slowly. But not... Yeah. Okay. Next turn, I think I'm just going to drop the Petitioners and the Spell Piers. Let's see. They don't have mana up for Murder's Rider, which is already great. Uh, it's great news to me. But a prison effect would be annoying. Oh! Oh no! Ew! Ew, ew, ew. That is absolutely not okay. Uh, self run void into mana. Uh, yep, that's not mana. And we pray play Brewwork for the mana efficiency. 
Oh no. Okay, at this point everything doesn't matter at all. Like... Uh, yeah, sure, play later, whatever. Whatever. We, can, we can't do anything anyways right now. <laughs> uh, if they swing it with a female here, that's just... Okay... I've got yeah, you. sure. Um, at this point, petitioner, petitioner, right? Just because we can't bounce the Alela and kill the Teferi, and then we can't close it out, so doesn't matter. Um, at this point, we're just gambling. Teferi is really not what we want to see here. Should have kept that, that up that sweet sweet spell piece. We can bounce the trotter though. That's more which like is it. reasonable, I think. Can't do much more with our mana here. So we do this. Uh, we play unsummon. And we keep up the petitioners in our hand in case they destroy multiples of them and we don't really care about the, the other like uh, the, the more like we could just play petitioner from hand and nah, it doesn't, doesn't matter Keep it back keep it clean and I would feel quite safe with the spell piece here But uh, for some reason the fairy type reveler is a card that doesn't like to be interacted with Temple of silence putting to bottom I th I I have the theory that they maybe get a zombie at the end of their turn uh, because I think they have one or two um, enchantments in their graveyard. Doesn't matter though. Okay, that is great for us because that doesn't matter at all. Nice. And that is probably game because they, they can bounce something here but we can just play Brewwag and a petitioner next turn or double petitioner like doesn't matter Really doesn't matter They need some kind of removal, but now they don't have to ferry anymore and we can just spell pierce that for good measure Wouldn't have mattered though And that is good game Okay, we, we do it like this. I'll play you. Play you. And then tap un four untap advisors that we control. Nice. Yep. Good game. And that we do it like this. If they, in s uh, like in some cases, sometimes, I don't think there is any way right now, but put, like if they have an instant speed way of putting something on top, we can mill that. GG. Uh, arena? Hello? Aha! Oh boy, Minotaurs. Okay, let's see. Where can we go from here? I think an opt is fine to maybe peel off a petitioner or counter spell from the top. Unsum is just the thing we want. No need more lands though. Okay, Minotaur, who would have guessed? Opt, nope, don't need you. Okay. So now the question begins, do we... We don't really have counter magic here, right? Eh, a bit unfortunate. Um, they probably have interaction though. I'm not going to block that. Uh, that's for sure. Okay. So we could go with Petitioner into Brewwag and hold up Unsummon. Or we could go Brewwag, be unsafe right now, and then Lazarus plating a Petitioner. But at that point, we could go also just with Dub Petitioner if they don't remove it, because that shows us that they. If they, if we drop the Brewwag here and they can't remove any of this. Um, this shows us we can just go for the double petitioner play. But if we just go for the petitioner, this play is around like 
This essentially reduces our clock by one, but keeps us safer during that. And this is more commitment, and we can still go a bit slower after that if we think they have something. But at that point, it shows us that they have to basically top tech something. So it really boils down to if they have removal. And then, shocking in the blood crypt, and uh, not not shocking in the blood crypt, shows us that they don't have anything. So I'm just going to play the Brewback here. Okay. And they are thinking. Maybe they have Ravenous Chupacabra here. Okay, they have Fire Prophecy, weird. Well, maybe they just peeled that from the top of their deck. Okay, so we don't have the we can't drop double petitioner here to win like to activate it once anyways now so i'd rather just hold up the last plating here and then we drop double petitioner next turn sure that is fine my turn and we drop double petitioner and hold up unsummon. Um, and do we activate now or later? Like against decks like Kinnan, we want to activate it now. Uh, I don't think we will ever block though, so let's just activate it now because it's too risky. And this shows us what they potentially have or have not in hand. So Scorching Dragonfire Lightning Strike is gone, which is obviously really nice, right? Um, but not much else, okay? This seems nice. Okay, sure. They can't kill us here, right? No. Because... Yep. That's a good game. Uh, GG. Goodbye, deck. It was nice knowing you. GG. Minotaurs. And... I mean, this hand is as simple as it can get, really. I mean, let's try it. Because they do usually don't have sweepers that we need to... or counter spells. So just forcing more petitioners on the board is the same as countering something, because we don't have the... Like, if we have the mana to counter something, we also have the mana to play another petitioner in this case. Uh, top decking a land would also be quite beneficial here. Oh, that's a... Aster. Yep. Land, Brewwag. No attacks. And I don't think we will block this. They will get their commander, though. Ew. Oh, that's not too nice. Okay, in this case, we play just one petitioner. And hold up unsubstantiate or miscast. <clears throat> and then we just unsubstantiate the Sethron. Or like if they murder us right or something, we can miscast that as well, which is also quite nice, right? Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, they're thinking about something, which means that it's not like a simple Sethron play. Or maybe they think we have a hard counter for creatures, or like they're evaluating creature counter, uh, non-creature counter. I, I mean, it makes sense, right? It's It does make sense, after all. 
Okay, they play mountain. We can counter an instant or sorcery for four mana or higher. Well, that is four mana or higher. Um, otherwise, we have to unsubstantiate it. Yeah, this will be unsubstantiated to reduce their clock. Otherwise, they can just kill us next turn, really. Uh, I mean, they should have still attacked with a Rage Blood Shaman. Um, bluff the shock here. Um, and then double petitioner and hold up miscast. Right. And yeah, we keep one of these back as blockers. Or well, then activate it when they block here. Uh, for the box. Whatever. You get the idea, right? And yep, they mentor. We block this. And we win. Um, GG. Activate you. Nice. We got there. Sweet, it's pretty close. Next game. And uh, Veto Thorn of Dusk Rose. As uh, essentially one card in well, they need to find one card, have the mana to play it, and we don't win, right? With exquisite blood. Um, miscast is nice. Uh, disdainful stroke is also nice to keep their infinite off the board, but I think we will win faster, anyways. I'm just thinking if I could do better, but the miscast is really, really what's appealing to me on this hand. Also, we go second, so we can. We have a higher likelihood. Oh boy. Okay, never mind about that miscast. If they take the disdainful stroke, that shows us they have the exquisite blood. Okay. And, um. Timberage, sure. Ah, damn. And we just want to top that land now. Land. Yep. And considering you don't even have a land, I'm just holding up miscast now and building my board. Okay, solemn simulacrum. Uh, they're fetching a ice swamp most likely, right? Um, they swing with veto to. No, that doesn't have lifelink by default. Oh, so it doesn't matter at all. Oh, uh, sure, we can go with Brewback and hold up Miscast. They know about the Miscast. Okay. And they... Try to win next turn. Um... <laughs> and we... <win. laughs> and we take the win <laughs> with the top deck. Oh boy, that was filthy. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! And we lose! <laughs> oh, GG. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh my god. I got excited for it there for a moment, but then the upkeep was a thing. Such a beautiful loop. Yeah. Oh, look at it. It's graceful. Yep. GG. Damn. So maybe we should have played faster, but... I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you sh think. I should have done just played it faster or not. Because this was essentially a fast kill anyways, right? So couldn't have done anything about that. GG. We are done with the games. 
Um, I really like the deck. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I think Petitioners is a really nice deck uh, to test your own decks against. Like if you have a partner, somebody plays Petitioner, and you just check your power level against this deck basically. Because it is essentially like the, a nice middle ground of a deck for Historic Brawl. Um, because you either want to kill the opponent at least as fast as this deck does, or you need interaction to interact with the opponent to stop them from doing this. And this deck just showcases that nicely, right? Also, um, great, great, great budget option, as I said before. Um, and yeah, you can even replace the Spark Double with a Petitioner and Mox Ember with a land, right? And overall, it's a really fun deck. It's very, one could say, simplistic in its playstyle. You basically have only one real choice that you do during the game. Well, apart from all, you have a ton of choices in Magic, right? But the main choice you do each and every game is, do I go for the fast combo or do I delay my win by one turn to keep up interaction? That's basically the decision making of this deck. And that's what you all have to ask yourself every single game. Like, for example, against Nissa who shakes the world, if that's the commander you're going up against, you will 100% want to do the fast combo, but against something like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, you want to do it slow and steady and keep up counter spells for the. <laughs> sorry, keep up counter spells for their counter spells essentially. Um, yeah. As for the rest of the deck, uh, we there was one game where we didn't draw the fourth, like third petitioner, and we could have actually used the Castle of Antris. You can add that if you want. Um, you can cut it if you want. I, I don't care, right? Um, you do you, and I always encourage you guys to edit my decks and see if you can come up with something better or just tweak the deck to your liking. Uh, anyways, um, I think that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.